Hello, and welcome to another Film Sessions here at Seahawks Scouting. My name is Brandon, and I do appreciate you as ever for tuning on in. We are going to continue today along our track of taking a look at these very good cornerbacks in this draft, specifically cornerbacks that fit to the Seattle Seahawks scheme and size dimensions and all that. And one guy I think I would be remiss not to include as part of this series is Israel Mukamu. I can't quite fully pronounce his last name, but he is a fantastic player. In fact, I see shades of this guy to a former Seahawk, let's not call him great, but very good player, in Brandon Browner. He looks just a lot like him, minus, of course, the knock knees. But he stands all of six foot four. He looks very long on the football field. It wasn't surprising, the least, that at his pro day, they measured out to 34 inch long arms. That is gargantuan size over at the cornerback position. And the thing that you like with this guy is the same thing that I like in looking at the Syracuse cornerbacks or looking at the Georgia cornerbacks is that you have two cornerbacks on the football field here that will both be going to the NFL level. So that means that a quarterback can't just do what a lot of these college quarterbacks like to do when they play up against a tough cornerback, and that is just essentially ignore them throughout the whole game, target the other side of the field constantly. This makes it very hard sometimes to ascertain or really drive into a prospect and understand what they're really bringing into the fold. You know that they're good enough to not be challenged, but you don't know how that's exactly going to translate onto the NFL level. Well, that's not going to be the case with a guy like Israel Mukamua because he's got a guy named J.C. Horn on the other side of him. And he did get his chance to be tested at certain times. So we get a good feel from him in that respect. He's a guy with ball skills. He's got some explosiveness to him, despite the fact that he is so tall and long. He had uh, nearly, I think, 37-inch vertical leap at his pro day. Did not run the 40, maybe probably fighting through some maybe little small injury or whatnot. And I don't expect this guy to necessarily go early. So he should be right in the wheelhouse for Seattle. But Everything they look at in a cornerback, good size, good competitiveness, ball skills, you know he can tackle. So let's dive in and see what this guy's got to offer. So because I like to get you all a little bit hyped on a guy, especially if it's a guy I happen to like a bit, we're going to do a little bit of a highlight package run here. It's not going to be a wide highlight package because unfortunately, Injuries are a little bit of a concern with Israel. He's only had really one year where he was able to fully go uh, for a full year, um, sort of sandwiched in between two years where he was only getting in there a handful of games. That being said, this guy's got seven career interceptions in three years at South Carolina. Hard to look away from that kind of production, even in that limited action. And you'll notice he is going to be here at the bottom of the screen. They're playing number three, Georgia, an undefeated team at the time. And so a good test against him. Of course, J.C. Horn's going to be on the other side of him, matched up. And what I really like about this particular highlight reel tape and, and the start of it uh, right off the gate is that you could almost take this first play of the highlight reel, and I feel like you could show this to John Carroll or, or John Carroll, John Schneider or Pete Carroll, and both would go, yep, that guy would fit into our scheme. Whether he, hit, whether he arrives in the draft production spot, whether he's picked too high or he, he goes a little bit in that later round where I think he will, it would fit where they, they see the value of it then. We'll see. But this is a Seahawk corner, born and bred. We look at this play off the start. He's playing off coverage to begin with. That's not a press look. You could say that almost the rest of the guys down the line are playing almost a press look, but not him. He's off coverage. And he's doing off coverage into a bail technique right off the snap. And this is, of course, exactly what Seattle does in their scheme. You look at this play in general, you've got him running that bail. You look at the top of the screen, Horns running his bail technique off the press look. And then if you look here, you see the shadow up at the top where you can't see that guy. This would be your Earl Thomas. This would be your single high free safety. So, this looks very Seahawky-like. And if you look at him getting down into the nitty-gritty details of it, my guy is into that bail technique, probably running cover three here. That's his first responsibility. And he's doing with his butt to the sideline, almost kickstep-like. Also another Seattle nuance to the way that they play the cornerback position. So very interesting when I first turned the tape on, I watched this play out the gate just before we even get to the full action of the play. Well, he's well acquainted with the Seahawks zone. He's all of 6'4", seven interceptions, got some, maybe some ball skills. Let's, let's see what he's got. So here we go. Jumps the route. Now, 
this might look like just simply jumping the route. Well, he read it. The quarterback's throwing off his back foot. Easy peasy. But there's a little bit more to this particular interception. As you see him and Bale come up. It helps that the guy gets the pressure here to allow that to take a little bit off the throw so he can jump the route. Ball skills to get out there, to pick that ball out away from his body like he does. That's nice. But here's, here's what's really impressive on this play. And this is the thing that, that is the, the sort of the secret sauce on a Seahawk cornerback. And that is that to be a truly special cornerback in this scheme, to be somebody who's going to go out the particulars of this scheme, because in this scheme, it sort of protects cornerbacks. It asks them to really cement in their mind this one responsibility, and it'll ask them to do other things too. But for the most part, it mainly says you're going to do this thing. You're going to protect against this deep ball. You are not going to get beat over the top. That is your job. That is your duty. Do not get beat. This way, the safety, of course, can keep those seam routes cleaned up. But the special type of cornerback in this particular scheme is the one who can recognize route combinations, be a film study guy, maybe just be watching the quarterback. And this is something that Israel does great. I don't know if he's a film study guy, but you can watch it right here. He's got his eyes not there on the receiver. You see his head turn. It's a little grainy, I know, but take my word for it. His head's turned toward the quarterback. He's watching him. And guys that are comfortable in zone get their eyes on a quarterback. Guys that are uncomfortable in the zone tend to start watching the men around them who are running around them, and that's where they get beat. So he's starting to pair some things together here that are why I like him so much as a prospect and why I think so many are elevating him into that status of being so much of a Seahawk-like cornerback. I understand him reading a lot into this particular play, but this is his upside. This is what he gives you and potentially coming right in the door. I don't know if I see a star here. Brandon Browner wasn't a star, and that's the guy I see here. But he could be an upper-level cornerback in this league in a purified scheme fit, 99.9% .9 scheme fit. Six foot four, 35-inch long arms, everything the Seahawks could ask for in a cornerback. And here, he has that cover three responsibility. He has got to protect this back here above all else. That is his responsibility. It's not he's covering this guy or he's covering that guy. He is covering the space, covering space. But if he recognizes that 17 runs an in-cutting route and he recognizes that this guy's going to do a comeback as he does and he recognizes the quarterback's off his back foot and throwing, guess who can jump around at that time? Guess who can take that moment, that key little moment then to go make a play? And that's just what he does here. Oh, oh, oh off his back, I'm driving. Drive on that ball. 36 and a half inch vert. Explosiveness. Uh, he didn't run a 40 in his pro day, so I don't know. He, but this guy comes in at 4.55 or something like that. You're fine with that. He's got the length he can make up. Look at this. You go, well, okay, he's too slow, you say. You say he can't. He, so he's too slow. Can't do it. Is he? He just got beat off line of scrimmage with a nasty little re outside release. Da -da -da -da. Outside, gone. I've got you by two yards. No, you don't. I just intercepted that ball. Length makes up ground. Size can make up ground that smaller guys don't. That's why it works well in zone at times. That's why Seattle holds these tall, long guys to such a claim. And with him, it's not him always jumping routes, as you'll see here coming up. But this is, again, makeup speed. I think he's a 4.55 guy probably right in that realm. And again, he's got some, you know, he can jump and ball skills. That's a recipe for some interceptions. Get the head turn. Boom. He's barely ready for it to ride, but he gets his hands up. When I look for a Seahawks cornerback prospect, this is the thing I want to see in them. Can they take the ball away? Here we got Trevor Lawrence on a flea flicker, throwing a post route down the middle. 34-inch arms. There's 30, 31 and a half inch arms here. Does that get the, get in there and get that ball away? Does a six foot two corner with 31 and a half inch arms pull this ball out? I don't know. I don't know. Because he's got 34. He's got 34 and he's strong. Again on the out route, poorly thrown ball, ready for it. Not all those interceptions of Browner and Sherman back in the day were by them jumping routes. Sometimes it was just them in the right place at the right time with nice. Sticky hands. 
to the top of your screen here. Oh, a bubble screen, fights off the block, gets in there, tackle. Nice job. Nice job. Just like we like to see there. I'm going to show you some film here soon where he's not doing as well in the tackling game as you'd like for his size. And sorry for the grainy footage, but there's not a lot of uh, defensive highlights here of a South Carolina team that wasn't great last year. Again, it's just a poorly thrown ball. Right place, right time. He's not doing anything special there. He's just in He's in his own responsibility and picks it off. Quarterback gives him a gift there. Looks the whole way. No, he didn't look. Kind of looks back and forth, but I, I don't know where he was going with that. I don't think it's hard, hard to miss the guy that's six foot four and gargantuan out there, isn't it? So he's an opportunist. Definitely an opportunist. Bob Muir's screen comes up. Oop. There's our opportunist again. He reacts really quick. You can see on that one interception where he just turned his ball head to the ball at the last second. And then this one. Oh, it's right here. Stick up that big paw and get it, big man. Stick up that big paw and just get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hopefully it gets you guys a little bit hyped for Israel. Now let's watch a little bit of his game tape here. And right out the gate, we're going to start out with uh, some game film here against Texas A&M. Kellen Mund, probably going to be a first-round pick in this particular draft. You've also got uh, Ashburn. I can't pronounce his first name. He is also going to be going in this draft probably around the fourth, fifth, sixth round. So there's, there's a relative challenge here for our South Carolina team as well. Texas A&M, seventh in the nation at this time, coming to this game. Carolina, South Carolina scuffling a, bit, a little bit despite the talented Corning corner pair that they have. So uh, let's see how it breaks all down here. Our guys right here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Israel Mukamu. Read option with Moon to the on the outside. Read option with Moon to the outside. Run up the middle. A lot of this game is going to be Kellen Mund and company attacking short underneath routes. This isn't because Mund doesn't have the arm to make these throws. It's more just the aspect of they're very aware of Horn and, and Mukamu. I think they're trying to sort of neutralize them in their, this game, and they did a good job of that, frankly. Um, you don't see him really trying to test. None of these throws are going at Mukamu. You can see all these guys here. He's, he just jumped up there in the slot. Up in there, he's playing just a lot of the zone cover you'd look for. Um this is a play that stands out to me in this set. This is one I really wanted to kind of concentrate on. And again, it's sometimes just the subtle things for me with corner play. When I'm especially trying to analyze these zone corners for Seattle fits. Uh, what you see here, bang, goes to the bail, just like we like, right? But what Kellen Munn sees pre-snap here, you know, what he's what he's hoping to um what he's hoping to operate off of here after the snap, and if I can get this right. Um, is he's he he's sort of seeing him lean up on his toes, and he's going he's kind of hoping here he gets a little bit of a press look, I think, to where this guy can maybe go get a little bit over the top on him. Um, now it does it is an in cutting route below, but that might have be a little bit of reacting to a little bit of what Mukamu does, where he just goes into the bail technique. But if you watch here, Mun's eyes go over there first thing. So this is one of those things where it wasn't a knock away, it wasn't an interception, but. Quarterback went somewhere else on an overthrow because you aren't open on that spot. And it's a quick little look there with the quarterback and his head turn. But uh, again, love to see it because this is the type of stuff you would see in our scheme. And it seems very simple and easy, but not all these corners can play this kind of fashion. Some are very uncomfortable doing so. Here he is up in press. Not much going down there. Another run play up the middle. Again, we got him out and press. A little stab, stab technique. Mud and company just trying to be uh, patient. I think they thought they could really move the ball here, and they do. You got to give them credit. They're moving it. Well, that was a healthy spot. Bottom of your screen. Mud and company, they're just rolling away from them both. You see him throwing it. 27s and 22s with the the defensive back numbers, and that's because they're not going after J.C. Horn, who's number one, and they're not going after 24. 
one with a little press. Not as much his game. And touchdown. They rub a rub route here. This is Horn's problem. Horn blocks his own guy out there. But this is away from Mukamu's side of the field. This is all on this is all on them there. I would say probably JC, who does not have the greatest of tape in this particular game. I like him a lot. He's going to go probably top 15 in this upcoming draft, but um, not the greatest of tape. Here he's a little grabby, a little grabby up the field here. In the pros, you know, you're going to get your – your five yards, but when you get down to here where he's da, 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 and it, here we almost get an interception out of it, but that's probably going to get called defensive holding right about there. So um, he's he's going to be that way. He plays with a little bit of that physicality stuff. I'd offer J.C. Horn probably plays a little bit more you know, handsy with the way he goes about his business. To me, there's a little bit of technical skill to what you see with Mukamu at times especially if you look through the lens of it being, and he's not a man guy, he's a zone guy, and the zone guy would fit probably best in this Seahawks scheme, quite frankly. Top of the screen, good footwork, stays with his man well, let's run play. Not a lot done in this particular game as far as stopping the run goes. You can see him on a play like this where he just kind of comes up blocked a lot. Not going near him right now. Another run up the middle. Bail technique going deep. It's not his man there. That's safety. Again, kind of coming out. Did, 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 did. You know, he doesn't come up there on that play. It's again to his side of the field, and he's kind of just happy enough to just kind of get out of the screen and let the running back come up and let somebody else make the play. That's the thing I I do see with him is he's not as as strong in the running game as I sure would like to see for a guy his size. He does not have Browner's nastiness or or meanacity. I'm creating that word tonight. Meanacity. He doesn't have Browner's manacity. It might actually be a real word. Now I think about it. Probably not. So a little wheel route on the backside, kind of little little uh, banana in the tailpipe. Off the screen, another run up the middle. Not a lot to take from this tape as far as him really in coverage here because he's he's not being he's not they're not going after him. They're just not. Again, he's down over here on that guy, top of the screen. Again, kind of just see this is this is where I do have a problem with him on tape, and this is the thing that can push him off Seattle's board potentially. You got it. You, you got it. Look at this. Da, 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 da. Look at the one hand. One hand. No. No, no, and no. This is a run to the side, and he makes it up in his mind that this play is over with and that he's done with it. And he's, it's, he doesn't need to do anything. This guy's got it. And then watch the receiver with his one hand. One hand block. That ain't going to work, buddy. That ain't going to work. Mun scrambling for his life. Nice little scramble. Again, a little coverage thing. Coverage and a little bit of pressure. They go together. Chocolate and vanilla. Ooh. Made a guy slide. He collared him. Underneath the middle. Staying away from the edges. Just not really attacking. Run up the middle again. So what, what's there derived from this tape? He saw it here. Uh, he's obviously enough of a problem as far as this quarterback is concerned, as far as this coaching staff is concerned, where they're not picking on him. They're not going after him. Let's see what he could have done here. What could he have done here? Yeah, see, this, this is a problem, though. This is a problem, though. And... Um, the more I watch it, the less I don't I, I don't like it. And I'm going to show you this, and it's going to bother you too. 
He starts running down the field later, make it look good for film. But he starts out here. Everyone else has got a hat on a hat. He needs to transgress his way on over to here and help these guys out over here. They got they they got kind of a numbers game here a little bit. Or at least they have a hat for a hat. So everything's over here on the second level. Now this guy doesn't help with what happens with him, the linebacker, because he's the only out, you know, off ball guy there. Um but just watch this. Like he just hides in behind the guy there. And this guy's cutting back across the field and stuff. He should have been there, frankly. Like you, you, and again, just watch it from the upside play here. Watch it again from this spot in a second. Here's the next play. Um, where again, just kind of puts his hand on the back. He's just, huh? Where did we, where'd it go? I, I didn't know it went that way. It went this way. Okay. So much more in this game impressed so far with some what he's seen in coverage overall. Not tested a lot, but that's always a problem with these cornerbacks and these college film, especially when you have a guy just as one good guy in the field, the quarterback never throws at him. There we go. Nice. Doesn't take the cheese. Sticks with his man in zone. Stays to his responsibility. He knows what to do with that. And then we got a little drag route right across the middle here. And this is, he finally gets thrown at and it's a touchdown. Look at him. Gets caught out too, side, too far wide with his technique. And he gives up all that inside. So you watch him get drawn too far out this way. And then back over. Yeah. They're running games. Texas is definitely trying to do some kitschy type things here with their offense to try to generate offense in this game. And it's working. They're up 21 nothing, But uh, he certainly got beat there. Certainly got beat. Ooh, nice stick. Nice stick, LB. Nice stick, LB. I like that. I like that. I like this kind of party. All right. A little bit of uh, Texas is definitely already leaning on that clock. Three minutes in the fourth, third quarter. All right, so we're, we're going to get a little bit of South Carolina against Old Miss. Now, neither of these guys are real world beaters, but there was a lot of good film out here for me to scout out on this guy. And again, he didn't play a ton of games in college. But uh, right out the gate here, kind of an interesting look. You've got him almost in a single high look here up top of the top of the screen there. So uh, they're going to play around with him a little bit out the gate here. I've watched a, I watched a little of this tape, but not all the way through. So we're going to be discovering this one together. I just want to get a little bit more film. He wasn't tested much the last game. So I want to see a little more of it. We got him in off coverage down at the bottom of the screen. Elijah Moore, of course, is uh, on the field here for Ole Miss. So a nice little challenge with that kind of guy. He kind of gets moved all around the field. Quick little route. J.C. Horn loses the tackle. Boy, so far some of the stuff I've seen with J.C. Horn and the questions on him with tackling have have been real. Uh, I will say Israel in the last game wasn't great. Man, he just comes up real soft into making a tackle. Ooh, we got lucky there with Kenny Yabo. Again, gets a little lucky here. And you can see it. That right there should have been called. Oh, no. Messed it up, but yeah, just you can't do that. You see his hand get out wide there with that. That's that's Let's watch again on this play. He's going to arrive up late. This is him here, and he's going to arrive up late for the tight end coming in motion. And he's late. This is one of the benefits, by the way, of doing motion, <laughs> Seahawks. Um, but you can see he buys on the route being outside, gets bought on it, pulls him out. That should have been a five-yard five yard play if not pass interference. So he probably would have caught that ball if not held up there. He would have gotten up to full speed or at least been able to maybe make a play on it.
couple short passes. No surprise. We talked about this last game. You're playing uh, to cover a uh, high single look safety team, a high, <laughs> high single safety look team with a lot of principles to protect against the deep ball. Well, you're going to see teams try to attack you underneath and short a lot. So here he's definitely attacked a little bit, but this is, um, let's see how this play was set up a little bit here. So almost kind of a sub trip look when you have the two tight splits. And I think you're going to get one guy they're trying to run off and then bring this guy back across in formation. This could be a little bit of what you'll see with our offense, I think, brought into play this year. Those easy completions that are just so hard to deal with because you're dealing with one player to two as far as the zone defender. That's why you see him running up late. He's got his first responsibility, which is deep, which is what the scheme is attacking in that moment. And then he comes. they come back underneath for the easy completion. Now, you have an attacking type scheme or something like that. The quarterback might not be able to pull this kind of play action off. If you've got more of the read and react soft, soft scheme, you can pull it off. But good tackle. That's the best tackle we've seen out of him so far. Oh, and then he just got caught in the traffic there. Good job by them to react. But boy, did he get caught in the traffic. Yeah, it looked like that was on him. I thought that was the other guy. Looks like Horn's trailing there. And he's on Elijah Moore. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, Elijah Moore. That looks nice. I like it. I like it. There we go. Fight through that block. See him finally coming. That's what I was looking for in the last game. Come up through on it, man. Like that. Fight through that stuff. Don't you're six four. You got arms as long as a continent. Just Come up and, and be a factor there. Be a force. These receivers at 5'11 and 185 pounds shouldn't be taking you on. Cuts back against the grain. More looking good again. Sudden and quick. Was this on our guy? Oh, yeah, it was. Turned him around. This is going to be a tough matchup for him. Look, we got to give this. This is going to be a tough one for him. Because more Elijah Moore of Ole Miss is going to turn anybody around, much less uh, when we're talking about they're coming out of a – Trip set. So you, you're already who you're going to cover already. Uh, this is a little bit sometimes confusing for these defenders. You got three guys tightened up. They scheme it well to get him open. And he runs a little bit of an in route here and then an out route there. But you watch him get turned around with those hips, which is what's going to happen on a guy who's 6'4", playing sort of kind of almost inside slot technique on this play. You know, he's not the outside guy. He's the outside I could make an argument here. You're not setting your guy up for success with this type of play. You know, you look at him here. He's, he's got to cover that off the slot. I, I want my Ugo Amadi doing that with Elijah Moore. I, I, I don't want Israel Mukamu doing that. And he's not going to be asked to do that kind of, if he's in a trips look, he's going to be taking the, the, the outside high guy, I would think. Maybe not. Maybe some teams could isolate him that way as well. Boy, 27 just, he sold on that one. Kind of a safe, coming out with the safety look with him in this game. Almost. It's kind of a weird, not a good angle, bad angle taken on that play. Just, this is, yeah, so he gets caught outside. I, I don't. I think he could maybe do some safety stuff, but I, I as I look at it, it's just like I don't know if that's going to be this kind of guy's bag. I think he's going to be an outside corner in this league. This is his best spot. That wasn't our guy, so. Tough too is that safety look thing is trying to want to assess a little more of his corner play here. You can kind of see here with Elijah Moore. This is why somebody like, oh, he's just a slot guy. 
I said, he's a little bit like a mini version of A.J. Brown. You know, is that a first round pick? No. But is that a guy who should be probably an early second round pick? Yeah. You know, he's going to lose a few inches to, to A.J., but good player. All right, let's do a little bit of uh, Florida, third ranked team in the nation at the time here, going up against our South Carolina team, zero and one at this point in time. Just want to get a little bit more of a feel here. I just don't have a good feel. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Has he, has he been tested? He's been throwing it like a couple times. He's actually given up a couple completions. We've seen him get a little bit handsy. Seen him moved around a little bit in the defensive formation. He's got good technique, as at least as far as solid fundamentals to what they're going to ask a corner to do. As you see there with J.C. Horn on that play, that's the, that's the smoothness you're kind of missing here. I see in Mukamuo, you know, watch his footwork. Da, 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 da. He's kind of all over, and then he's pressing, hands on him. It's not bad, I guess, the more I look at that. But... Ooh, look at that. That helmet went flying. My man doesn't care. He says, I'm here all day. There we go. Get your head in there and tackle. Nice tackle there. Tackling has been okay. A little inconsistent. Bad tape on AM, a and M. Better tape on the last tape we watched. That was good. They're going after Horn here. Trask has taken Horn to school a bit. Haven't seen uh, our guy attacked yet, though. They got him all those there, so. No. Sort of. Uh, Getting a little weird here is you've got him in the slot, which is odd. I don't know if they're just trying to match him up on a tight end there. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. That is a honey bucket throw right there. I mean, that was a. <laughs> Kyle got that one on. He had good coverage there. I did not think he was going to fit that in. Nice coverage there. Just kind of floats it over him. I mean, that's six foot four and a guy leaping 36 and a half, and you get it over him. Sometimes they just get you. Still, they did get him there. That was Israel. Fumble, fumble, I, uh, fumble in the field. A little pooch kick. Okay. I think Kadarius Tony's back there or something, maybe. They're scared of the Tony. Here we go. Wild route. Not great tackling. Trask is going over here. Okay, I don't know what that, I don't know what the point of that was. There's some throws and calls where you're just like, what was the point of that? His job of getting across. He got across the block on that last play on the bubble. Again, another single high look and the safety look with him. Interesting. Come on, get there, buddy. If he didn't have help, that guy was going to break his tackle. Ooh, Pitts. Yeah, that's a touchdown, boys. <gasps> Inside. Ooh, nice cut, kid. <laughs> oh, my God. Horn is, Horn is Mr. Press, dude. He was, he was all up in that guy's kitchen. But, you know, we're through now two quarters here. We've seen one throw at him here in this game, which is completed. I guess the bad part, you know, the good news is he isn't throwing at a lot. The bad news is when he's throwing at, he gives up completions like that right there. And, you know, look, this is Pitts. This kid's going top 10, top five maybe in this in this draft. This is a uh, tough move for him because this is attacking his hips on the next play here. He's, he's coveraging pretty good there on the previous play. But uh, you'll see him here. This is a slant route. He's got to worry about the fade here. He's got to protect against that. Pitts knows he's got to protect against that. Challenges him to that outside shoulder, crosses him back up. You make the corner now flip his hips from kind of 
tucking outside to flipping him back across and is enough to get him open for the touchdown. Um, how often is he going to be matched up with a guy like Pitts in that kind of situation? Hopefully not often. You know, you I think almost probably lean towards a corner in that situation over a, or not corner, but a, you know, more of a, a smaller corner there to be able to handle him and just hopefully deal with the the fade stuff. But at the same time, too, there's a going theory over there where you go, hey, this is why I want an Israel Mukamua. I want him matched up against a Kyle Pitts and able to neutralize that huge wingspan and and take some of that down a notch for him because he should be able to match up against match up against him with him at that point, step for step. And um, I can kind of get that logic and reason with it too as well. Um, this is this is why we look at a guy like Mukamu and say he's not a first, second, third, fourth round prospect in my estimation. He is a guy you get later on. He is a guy that you're you're hoping can develop and, and build on some of these things he has. Ball skills, an ability to press reasonably well, good coverage skills in zone. It's been, maybe his, his best, in my opinion, in watching him, just the best thing he kind of does. And now he comes up, makes the tackle. Again, this is them attacking him, but this isn't as much his fault. I'll, I'll say this. He is, <laughs> he's given up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's given up 12 yards of space to Pitts. One could say that this might be a little much, Israel. I, I know you're protecting against the deep ball, but the end zone's literally on your, your butt. The end zone's here, so maybe don't stress that as much. Come up to where your other guys are at, but he's obviously, again, a little worried about the ability of Pitts to get up on top of him, I guess. Um, interesting, especially when you watch them bang. Now they attack, and now you got to come up 11 yards and try to make a play here, and Pitts is just going to eat that up. There we go. Yeah. So some issues here with Pitts, man. No doubt about it. All right, so I think we got a good feel on this kid. Let's do some final thoughts on this guy. As he misses a tackle, by the way. As he as he misses as he misses a damn tackle. And this is this plays why a lot of guys like Kadarius Tony. Look at this, just boom, boom. No wait, not this play. This play does. Takes it, open field, slide, slide. Two guys slide off and in there. Touchdown. Kids tough to bring down. Israel Mukamua, an imperfect prospect in a talent-laden rich draft. And there is nothing wrong with that. This guy is exactly what Coach Carroll and John Schneider look for in their corners. This is what they've looked for from day one when they walked in the door. Long, tall, familiarity with this zone scheme and the principles within it. An ability to drive on routes and ball skills to go up there and take it away. Just what the doctor ordered, as they say. So it would not surprise me in the least to see them pick him on day three of the draft. Don't think he's going to go high in your fourth round range. Fifth may even be a little bit high for him as well. But somewhere in that fifth, sixth, seventh round, he'll be picked. And I would love to see Seattle target him because the upside here is you're getting a uh, cheap cornerback on a cheap deal on a fifth round type deal for the next couple of years who might just slide in and start for you right out the gate. Are there questions with his tackling? Yeah. Is there a question a little bit with his tenacity for this is not the Brandon Brown or press corner of yesterday. It's not a guy who's going to just put a guy in the dirt at the line of scrimmage. But he does have Browner's ball skills. He does have his knack for taking the ball away. Played something cumulatively like 17 total games and got seven interceptions. It's not too bad of numbers. And you could see in the games we watched, where as though we didn't get a lot of a sweet film of him knocking balls away and, and having a bunch of breakups and interceptions, nonetheless, we got to see the fact that quarterbacks weren't really willing to test him all that much. It seemed at times they were almost willing to go at J.C. Horn, his teammate, a little bit more, the guy who's going to be drafted much higher. It's kind of interesting to see. Either way, I'd be happy if the Seahawks were to draft him come draft day because I think he will be a good player for us if we do. Israel Mukamua, remember the name.